Ganesh, it's a pleasure to catch up with you here at Mobile World Congress on the Radisys stand. You know, you and I have been talking about Open RAN for five, six years now at this point. There's been so much work on making the interoperability work, making the performance up to par with integrated systems. Give us a little bit of overview of where we are today, what you see coming next. Okay. First, a pleasure meeting you, like we've been discussing over the years. The industry really has moved on in my view, uh, Sean, because uh, there was a moment of doubt and uh, there was a lot of skepticism way back in 2019, 20, that this will all work or not. And uh, now we are seeing a real traction and real life examples of things working. Oran Alliance is doing this through PlugQuest, multiple vendor consortiums, where we see the interoperability being established. A network like Dish, where it is multi-vendor and operational today, a live 5G network with multi-vendor. That's a live example of how things can be made to work in open run. But having said that, it is still not a plug and play story, not a smooth and uh, straightforward affair. We still need work and the standards are being matured, more test centers are being established, vendors are being more and more proactive in their way of testing. And we would like, we would see that uh, this is going to go into the next level of maturity, wherein the operators or the private network enterprises who are is buying the solution can go with a certain level of faith that the basics work, maybe additionally whatever they need, fine tuning and performance oriented things, that's going to happen with additional effort. That's where we are. And I know Radis has recently participated quite successfully in the 5G challenge. Maybe tell us a little bit about the work that you all did there and what you learned from it. Sure. We were in 2022, wherein our DU product was the winner in that category. This time the rules changed in 2023. It was CU and DU together as a system. And we went in with the CU and DU with uh, a blind pairing with another third party radio vendor. And we successfully completed all the stages and uh, we won the grand prize. And uh, having done this over the two years, the second year is was more intense. And I would say uh, the level of scrutiny and the number of stages of testing, the kind of test cases and the hardening which we had to do. Of course, we had to fix some issues as well, in the interoperability especially, because the interpretation of some of these standards could be a little varying, whether it's 3GPP or ORAN. And these are the learnings which we had, and then what we demonstrated at the end of this 5G challenge was the first ever, probably, the mobility or handover scenario between two different open run vendors, and that was seen as a milestone, uh, as a highlight of that event. And then I also wanted to catch up with you uh, following the acquisition of Mimosa and the integration of it into the company. Where are you today? How does it sort of change the value proposition? Right. So Redis is, if you look at it, uh, we're going up one level above in providing a unified access strategy to all our customers, whether it's a rural customer or a mid-tier operator or a tier one operator operating macro network. We have solutions for them either in the cellular, 5G, or a broadband connectivity using the PON technology, or in some cases it is the unlicensed Wi-Fi, both as a point-to-point -point and point-to-multipoint solution, covering both household needs and as a backhaul as well. So it nicely fits into our portfolio, and we are now able to offer a unified portfolio of access to our customers. And you know, not everybody is at Mobile World Congress, although there's certainly a lot of people here and a lot of people in the stand, but for those not able to join us, can you take us through some of the themes that uh, your demonstrations in the booth speak to? Very good. So, ours is a very diverse portfolio, and uh, when we talk about access, we talk about three pillars. One is the 5G or the cellular part of it, the RAM, and the core network for the private network as well. We have demos for that, wherein, wherein we have the CBRS solution working, and we have an IAB internet access backhaul solution for specific tactical communication and the macro mobility solution as well. And having done all of these things and the demonstrations are available here, we are also focusing on the other types of access, the PON access especially, the 10G PON, and our unlicensed Wi-Fi products are also on display. And having enabled this transport or connectivity layer, we are also looking at enabling the digital experiences through our media and devices offering. In the media side, we have new offering of solution wherein we can enhance the level of communication either in translating in real time or enhancing communication for audio impaired uh, situations wherein our, our solution can come in and solve that problem. And the wide variety of devices which we have through which we can prove 
all of this being available for end-to-end -end connected experiences, and that's the enhanced digital experience we want to give it to our users. And as I've walked around the FIRA today, there seems to be a good deal of emphasis on sustainability, bringing in system level energy efficiency, reducing power consumption, and this has OPEX implications, obviously, but the bigger picture is that globally, we're working towards net zero targets that have been well-defined and well-articulated. Maybe just give us a little insight into how you see this taking shape in telecoms broadly, and more specifically, what Radisys is doing. Sure, especially in the wireless network, and uh, this is thought to be a primary problem for the operators in operating the power-hungry 5G networks, right? especially the radio equipment and the base station. All of these consume higher power in 5G, and we are addressing in two parts, one at the base station and with the radios. And in base station, we are able to work with our partner Intel uh, to have the energy switching based on the traffic load condition. The processors can switch to a lower energy state this is one implementation we've been highlighting in both cloudified implementation and a non-cloudified implementation as well. And we'll be showcasing this in future trade shows as well. And in fact, this is an ongoing collaboration with Vodafone, uh, the lead operator for this uh, energy saving study in the context of Oran Alliance Flagways. We are continuing that collaboration. And uh, we are also looking at additional savings by timing it with the radio and uh, a time-based switching on and off, the traffic load-based switching on and off of the radio circuitry in the radios. That will give you additional gains. And this is a partnership that we have with the radio partners. So holistically, both from base station and the radio uh, combined, we are able to show greater savings, at least in the range of around 20% to start with. And the higher level of savings can be achieved based on the actual traffic conditions. And then last question here, Ganesh. You know, if we assume a typical 10-year G cycle, we're roughly at the midpoint in 5G. So how are you thinking about what's next in terms of 5G advance, maybe even 6G, and this longer move towards disaggregation, decentralization, and cloud native? Yeah, so the release, releases from 3GPP, release 18 onwards, it's called officially the 5G advanced release of 3GPP. And we're already implementing those things. And those are some of the newer features on the satellite communication and more MIMO-related and mobility-related optimization. We'll be incorporating all those into our product. But in the longer-term view of a permanent theme of how the network is evolving, the radio network, we're going to see more application of AI. So we are talking about AI native radio access network. AI coming into picture for the layer two functions, the layer one physical layer functions, how do we intelligently control the traffic, radio resource management, interference and in all these aspects. And all the elements except probably the radio being cloud native. So A native, cloud native, a high level of automation driven by the ReconX apps. This is what we are seeing as the future of evolution. And these elements will be built into the 6 standard, wherein all of this will be there. And the one unknown question or uncertain part is the frequency spectrum for 6G, which will be standardized. But other parts of the network architecture are still slowly evolving, and Open RAN will be the fundamental of 6G. Sounds like the best is yet to come, Ganesh. It's yes, such sir. a pleasure to catch up with you and have you share your perspective Thanks, with our audience. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.